Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, uh, first of all, I uh, thank the organizer very much for inviting me to do this first talk uh, to this, uh, this, this uh, conference. And uh, my special thanks goes to Professor Yong Du, uh, the main organizer, I understood, and uh, all the team behind. Yeah, a lot of organization uh, is required to do such a uh, such a meeting, and uh, so it's my great pleasure to give you some uh, information about our work at uh, the Karlsruhe Institute of uh, Technology in uh, Germany, where I'm coming from, uh, and this is from the Institute for Applied uh, Materials where I'm working. And we have uh, many uh, different uh, activities there, and I'm just going uh, to talk about now a little um, on uh, two examples, uh, introducing you to the use of computational thermodynamics, the Calvert method, to understand high temperature materials, hard materials, and also what we are doing in terms of combinatorial uh, experiments to uh, produce uh, hard coatings by magnetron sputtering. The co authors are soon senior researchers. Where this point is? A little. So these are senior researchers uh, from our institutes, and uh, so they actually did a lot of the work I'm going to present now. The idea is the idea is um, is a brief outline that I will talk about uh, ternary systems, silicon carbon nitride, including silicon carbide and silicon nitride as hard materials. And uh, then uh, we extend this ternary system to a quaternary system by adding foreign. It does not show uh, uh, so well, but um, extending that by boron, including boron carbide uh, material. And then uh, completely different things um, how we use uh, magnetron, magnetron sputtering. Uh, for producing chromium zirconium oxide uh, coatings uh, on the uh, hard metal um, uh, substrate. All right, first of all, we are talking about uh, precursor derived ceramics producing hard materials, high temperature materials, and actually, we start with uh, such liquid precursor polymers. And uh, in the next step, at about 200 to 400 degrees C, we do a polymerization. Uh, to start uh, uh, with a material which has already a pre-ceramic network. So we have like a fingerprint already, uh, which gives us the hint how the ceramic we are producing by thermolysis at 1000 to 1400 degrees C um, uh, is looking like. And this is an amorphous ceramic material. This amorphous ceramic material can be used already for the application, for high temperature applications. And uh, then in the next step, uh, we may have a crystallization at temperatures higher than 1400 uh, degrees C. So this is a crystalline ceramics, and you can produce, for instance, such, uh, such wires or as well uh, such hard coatings to protect uh, any materials uh, which uh, might be used for high temperature applications in aerospace <laughs> also. Now the name of the game is the, uh, the Calvert method. So this is a part of the computational thermodynamics and I'm not going now into all the details of that. I just want to say, and Professor Yong Du is very active in such uh, uh, approach as well, we are um, developing analytical descriptions for the, uh, for the Gibbs free energies for all phases in a binary, a ternary, or a multi component <coughs> system to do some predictive calculations to understand heterogeneous equilibrium reactions in the multi component systems. So, this is the name of the game, and uh, we are calculating single equilibria phase diagrams, phase fraction diagrams, potential diagrams, and much more to understand the high temperature reactions of complicated uh, materials. If you are interested in more details, you can go just to this website, 
www.calfat.org, where many details are uh, explained, and uh, there is an annual conference, the Calfat conference, uh, for many decades, where we uh, attending on a regular base. So now start with the SICM system. So the silicon carbon nitrogen system. And as I said before, we are starting with binary descriptions. And you can see here, for instance, the silicon nitro nitrogen system, including the silicon nitride ceramic uh, material, the silicon nitride ceramic material. And uh, here, upside down, the silicon carbide material in the silicon carbon system. So this is the first step. Uh, we have to describe the binary subsystems, and then we are interested what is happening in the ternary uh, system, what are the phase reactions, how can we use the calculations for uh, understanding the multiphase reactions. So now the first example I want to give you is a precursor derived material, the NCP200, a commercial material which is provided by a, a company from Japan. And uh, this is the exact uh, uh, chemical composition, Si1, nitrogen 0.6, C1.02. And uh, I have now just indicated this composition here in the ternary system, silicon, carbon, nitrogen. And you can see here that composition indicated in the ternary system. And the question is, what happens when we are doing high temperature treatment of such uh, initially amorphous material, what is the crystallization, what is the heterogeneous equilibrium. And I indicated here already a reaction path. So during heat treatment, we may lose nitrogen at higher temperatures. So the material loses nitrogen. This is the reaction path. And we may end up in the tie line between silicon nitride and silicon carbide. And then the next step, we might have a dissolution and uh, decomposition of the silicon nitride, losing more nitrogen to form silicon carbide and silicon. So now uh, this is a qualitative uh, indication, and using now the thermodynamic calculation, we can um, indicate the qual quantitative data by calculating phase fraction diagrams. And here you see the relative phase amount against the temperature. And what you can see here now is when we increase the temperature, that the graphite, which is indicated here, about eight uh, uh, mass percent of graphite, reacting with silicon nitride to form silicon uh, carbide. And uh, this is indicated uh, here. So now, at a specific temperature, um, the graphite uh, reacts with the silicon nitride, and we will have the formation of the gas phase, and this is mainly nitrogen. And we have, will have a release of about, yeah, about 12 mass percent of uh, nitrogen gas. And when we even increase the temperature, we may have the decomposition of the silicon nitride. You see here, uh, it goes down to a level of zero, it decomposes, and the gas phase, the nitrogen, is forming uh, here. So an additional release of about 15% of nitrogen. Now, we look in the experiment, and we can see here, this is the NCP200. This is a TGA, thermotrigonometric analysis. And as we predicted from the calculation, we can see here a mass loss of about 12% at about 1,600 degrees C, and at higher temperature, another mass loss of about 15%. So this is a simple example how we can predict the behavior of the, the high temperature behavior of the materials um, in terms of the mass loss uh, when we make a heat treatment. Now, this is another TGA a diagram. We have just looked at this NCP200, and it decomposes. The, the thing is, if we now add some amount of boron, it turns out 
that uh, such material, SIPCM material, is about a level of 8 to 12 percent of boron, that for some reason this material does not decompose. You see, it's high temperature stable uh, up to uh, very high temperatures, about 2200 degrees C. And uh, the question is, why is that? Now, what we can do, we do a thermodynamic calculation in the quaternary system. And this is shown here again, a phase fraction diagram for this uh, material. So, this is a special uh, composition. You see about 10% uh, of foreign content. And from the phase, phase fraction diagram, you would not expect that this is a high temperature stable material because you can see the decomposition of the material where the silicon nitride reacts with the graphite to form silicon carbide yeah, is proceeding at about 1500 degrees C again and you have uh, an additional phase for nitride which does not take uh, part in the uh, heterogeneous equilibrium reaction. So, we would, from such a phase fraction diagram, we would expect a decomposition of the material um, uh, and not a high temperature stability. So, how to explain the high temperature stability up to 2200 degrees C? So, to understand it, uh, we have to use high resolution transmission electron microscopy. And I can show you here uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, results. So when we look by high resolution transmission electron microscopy, we see the high temperature material silicon nitride, silicon carbide, and uh, so individual grains embedded in the tuberstratic layer of foreign carbon nitride. And this is a very special feature. And even at 2200 degrees C, where silicon nitride should have decomposed already, we find silicon nitride. At this temperature, which is surprising, and the silicon carbide and the turbostratic BNC. So now, what is the effect? The effect is, you see here, that the silicon nitride is, so to say, encapsulated, encapsulated by the turbostratic BNC. That means we have an internal pressure, which we have to take into account during the high temperature treatment. And for this, explanation, we need a so-called potential phase diagram where we have the pressure of the nitrogen, here the temperature, and you can see here that even if we take into account just 10 bar, the stability of the material, the decomposition, um, and the reactions here is increased significantly. So this is the first explanation why this material is high temperature stable. The other thing is that we do not have graphite um, in, as a free uh, element. So here you can see the graphite has a lower activity than one. And taking into account uh, this as well, so pressure of 10 bar plus lower activity uh, of the uh, carbon, we can see that the temperature of the reaction, of the decomposition reaction is increased. And this is another explanation, so combined effect, encapsulation of the silicon nitride in the microstructure, plus the reduced activity of the carbon easily explains the, the high temperature stability of the SRPCM material. So by this combination, microstructure analysis by high resolution transmission electron microscopy, plus investigation uh, of the quaternary thermodynamics of the, of the system, we can answer, understand uh, the uh, material's behavior. So the conclusions we can make, so we should use simulation of multi-component, multi-phase reactions. We can confirm experimental results. <coughs> and um, we can say that uh, this is an efficient materials analysis and uh, materials engineering design by combining experimental analysis with the thermodynamic uh, modeling. So actually, that was my first example yeah, from uh, our work, what we are doing in Karlsruhe. And uh, as uh, said, 
I would now uh, come to the next example, explaining you a little about our work on the, the uh, magnetron sputtering, physically made by deposition, to, to produce uh, here such hard, um, hard coatings. And uh, so I don't want to go in all the details, uh, but a major effort worldwide nowadays is uh, to uh, produce oxide-based coatings by magnetron sputtering for the protection of uh, materials for different uh, applications like uh, tool coatings in manufacturing, biological applications, and so on. So there's a big international competition, and we are a part of this international competition to produce hard coatings by magnetron sputtering uh, and uh, make a contribution. So in that case, for the chromium zirconium oxygen system, you have to take into account mainly the uh, uh, equilibrium phase, the chromium oxide, this coronium structure, and as you know, the zirconia, which uh, may have the monoclinic, the tetragonal, and also the cubic crystal structure. So we have to take into account uh, the different uh, phase modifications and in some cases as well, the phase transformations of the material. And also the, the phase uh, diagram, which uh, I'm not going into uh, the details here. But look, so the chromium oxide hardness is uh, about uh, 30 gigapascal, and zirconia is already known uh, very well uh, to produce as a hard material for uh, coatings and uh, cutting tools. So now we approach as said, is uh, the magnetron sputtering. We are using uh, we are using uh, targets, segmented targets. So we have one side chromium, the other side is zirconium. This is the, the, the target here, yeah. And we have a reactive plasma, which is made from argon and oxygen. So reactive plasma, and then we have a substrate holder table where we have uh, different. Uh, different um, segments, one to five. And the substrate material itself is tungsten carbide cobalt. So we want to coat the chromium zirconium oxide onto the top of the hard metals. That's the aim of the, of the work. Yeah, there are some more parameters. I'm not going into the details. So the substrate temperature is about uh, up to 500 uh, degrees C and the distance between the target and the substrate is about uh, 40 millimeters. And this is done in a magnetron sputter facility, the Leibold C550. Now the result of uh, the work is that uh, you have seen we have these different sample positions, one to five, and uh, now we are doing analytical uh, investigations. <coughs> what is the chemical composition of the materials? And you can see here, so these different positions, one, two, three, four, five, you can find different chemical compositions. So you can see here the chromium content at uh, the position number one is higher, obviously, than at uh, number five. And the zirconium, um, uh, the zirconium composition uh, fraction is increasing uh, with the different uh, sample positions. Yeah? This is the uh, uh, result of the analysis, and uh, we can also, by XRR, we can find out that there is a change in the density of the material. So from position one to position five, it is increasing in accordance with the properties of the chromium oxide and the zirconium uh, oxide uh, material. So the density increases with increasing zirconium uh, content. Also, we find out that the metal to non-metal ratio shifts from two-thirds to a half with increasing zirconium content. And this is not, not very surprising because we are starting with a corundum type structure and ending up in the zirconium oxide uh, structure. And this is related to the zirconium or the metal uh, to oxygen relationship. You can see here some examples uh, of the surface, surface topography. We are quite satisfied, yeah. Uh, dense 
um, uh, uh, coatings without any cracks we can form. You can see here the, the, at the dimension bar, five micrometers. And so now from the position one to the position five, you can see here, chromium rich, the zirconium rich, uh, you have here a more nanocrystalline material, and this is more a smooth surface, uh, which we are forming by the magnetron uh, sp uh, sputtering. X-ray diffraction also gives some uh, information about uh, the phases which are forming. You can see here position 5, 3 and 1, position 5, 3 and 1. <coughs> and by X-ray diffraction we find out that uh, in position 5, for instance, we find the monoclinic uh, type of the conium dioxide, whereas in the chromium rich uh, part, we find uh, a distinguished different composition, uh, the chromium oxide in the coronium structure. So this is uh, uh, very clear. By using such segmented targets and different sample positions, one to five, we can smoothly change the composition and the phase structure of the coating. So this is a combinatorial approach we are using. and. Uh, we also did uh, some high-resolution uh, transmission electron microscopy. So, for instance, here, number one position, just below the segmented carbide of chromium, we find here the very, uh, very smooth uh, uh, coatings. We can analyze here by high-resolution transmission electron microscopy the lattice spacing and uh, the related diffraction patterns. So. What is the, uh, our assumption? The assumption is that uh, we have some cation substitution. That means originally we have chromium 2 or 3, chromium 2 or 3, and the zirconium will substitute some of the chromium in the crystal structure of the corundum. Yeah? So, single phase, it's a single phase uh, corundum structure, and the zirconium 4 plus substitutes. For the chromium 3 plus. So that was the first time uh, this could be uh, found. And uh, then the next thing is if you have a position, a middle position number 3, just between the two segmented uh, parts here, uh, we find out that we have uh, cubic zirconia, but some of the zirconia 4 plus is uh, substituted um, uh, by the chromium 3 plus. Yeah, this is another result, so we can smoothly change the composition and the phase formation and also the properties of the hard coatings on the hard metal substrate. Another thing uh, which is uh, of um, interest is how um, does the uh, temperature of the substrate on which we do the coating, how does the temperature influence the properties of the uh, coatings and uh, we have seen here um, uh, different temperatures or applied different temperatures 500 degree, 420, 350, 210. Mm. And you see here the related X ray diffraction uh, patterns. And what we can see here is that, um, that uh, at higher temperature, we have for such a position number one, we have a nice crystallization of the chromium oxide, the corundum type material, whereas at lower temperatures we have uh, complete uh, amorphous material. So these peaks here, these are the, the reflections from the hard metals. Yeah, this is not the coating itself. So we find here very clear crystallization behavior with increasing temperature uh, uh, during the treatment uh, of the substrate. So, from such results, we can derive a schematic landscape of the chromium zirconium oxygen uh, thin films depending on the substrate temperature in the PC and the sample position number one to five. You can see here if we are in an area, well, let's say about up to 450 degrees C. We are producing amorphous coatings. Yeah, uh, we are producing uh, amorphous coatings, and when the temperature is increasing, for instance, at position number one, 
Sometimes you have some from, uh, higher temperatures than 450 degrees C. You have the formation of the chromium oxide, which dissolves some zirconium. 4 plus. For another example, position 4. You have here a morphous state of the coating, and you are increasing temperature, and then you are uh, forming a mixture of the coating of monoclinic and tetragonal uh, zirconia. So this is a landscape, so uh, so to say the, the way uh, or, or giving the direction for industrial production as well, uh, which type of coating uh, you uh, receive with different uh, uh, manufacturing conditions. And uh, yeah, just a final slide here showing you the hardness uh, of the material. So we did uh, uh, indentation, hardness investigations in gigapascal, and you can see here quite promising results. Uh, the work is going on, and uh, we are uh, still changing some parameters to uh, improve, but we find out the uh, highest value of about 20 uh, gigapascal uh, of hardness for these uh, coatings, independent again uh, from the substrate temperatures uh, of the, of the um, uh, materials. So the conclusion too, uh, in regard to this combinatorial approach, um, we can say uh, that uh, we can uh, design um, very specifically new type of oxide uh, coatings, first time worldwide, we think. Um, we uh, develop a, a substantial experimental days, database for new material, and we can have noble solid solution oxide synthesis in the corundum structure as well in the, in the cubic zirconia structure. So the phase formation dependence is on the chromium zirconium uh, ratio, the metal oxygen ratio, the substrate temperature, and maybe other parameters. And uh, we can uh, derive solid solutions which maintain um, application temperatures of at least 700. 50 degrees C. So we have a change of the mechanical properties upon annealing, and this is ongoing work in Karlsruhe and um, also worldwide. Now, we said that I come to an end, Mr. Chairman, yeah, and uh, I just want to thank um, here the funding organization. So we are funding from the Helmholtz Association. This is our Helmholtz Center in Karlsruhe. The research center in Karlsruhe, our institute is somewhere located here, and uh, uh, the center of Karlsruhe itself is the university part of the Karlsruhe Institute uh, of Technology. So this is the, the beautiful city of Karlsruhe where I'm coming uh, from. So I thank uh, the Helmholtz Association, the Ministry for Research in Germany, the German Research Foundation, and I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So the public are uh, open for questions. We can have two questions. Thank you, Sir, and thank you uh, very much for your very interesting uh, topics. I, I'm in Beijing, come from uh, University of Science, Technology, Beijing. Yeah, I have one question. Uh, generally, I'm very interested in your uh, applied uh, geopolitics here in in the selection. Uh, and I think uh, sometimes you mentioned the solu uh, solid solution, a uh, geopolitics, uh, chromium oxide. Yeah. And in other cases, you found uh, only the geopolitics uh, uh, oxide and the chromium oxide. Yes. I, I just wonder how can you uh, define these two? And another one, and uh, have you ever considered uh, for geochromia, sometimes they keep the uh, T phase and sometimes iron phase, and from the uh, XRB analysis, there exists the T and the M. Yeah. No, sometimes it changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you're right. I mean, the, uh, actually, the, the, um, the, the separation between the two phases, tetragonal and monoclinic, just by X ray fetch, is very difficult. Yeah. So what, what we are doing, we are using uh, diffractometry, uh, using transmission electron microscopy as well. 
And uh, uh, we have, I can give you the paper which is related to, so we make a very detailed and a long-term analysis, I have to say, uh, to, to say this is really a mixture of the T and the yeah. M. The, the other question I think you are raising is the chemical composition. And in that case, um, we uh, do uh, some investigations by microprobe EPMA. So um, using very uh, uh, extended and uh, um, uh, high, high level standards to really find out uh, the chemical composition and the ratio of the chromium to the zirconium. So uh, in the background, I could not, I could not tell, uh, say or show all the results. We have to do a lot of analysis and uh, many, many uh, um, different departments uh, help us to understand uh, the crystallography, chemical, um, chemical um, composition, uh, mechanical properties, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. Thank you. So since the uh, question and the answer are too long, so I need to stop. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>